Welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to talk about good pods, but this time good pods in a web browser as opposed to the mobile device. I did a video on that, I think about six months ago. I'll link it up in the show notes below so you can check it out. I shared my thoughts about good pods. A lot of that has transferred over to the web for some reasons. One being it's just the way good pods works. And two, there's a lot of features yet that haven't come over from the mobile app. Uh, into the web app, but I presume they'll be coming soon enough. Okay, first let's just talk about Good Pods and what their differentiator is. Back when I did the video, they talked a lot about how they were doing this for the independent creator, how there was this big movement to really surface, well, to use an industry term, help discover the podcasters around the web. I had some questions about that, especially when the homepage of their website highlighted some celebrities. I talked about that in the last video, but the proof is in the pudding. I think they've really doubled down on it over, I don't know, again, the last six months. What I've seen them doing as of late is doing more Twitter spaces. I really start to see these features that highlight indie podcasts in the app improving on the mobile app. So I think they're in a good place. Like I think when you're thinking about starting podcast and then, you know, where can you listen to podcasts? Where can you engage with the community? Where can you find other podcasters? Good Pods is going to be a really nice home for you. I'm going to say social network. It's probably too much of an overused phrase to say that that's what Good Pods is, especially knowing that that's what Podchaser wants to be. But let's just talk about how I use Good Pods and maybe why it's not my daily driver. So we know what Good Pods is. I still haven't switched over to Good Pods as a daily driver. I use Pocket Casts. I've done other videos about podcasting 2.0 stuff, which you know I'm also heavily involved in. I also don't use those podcast apps as a daily driver as much as I think they're really awesome. They get a lot of great features, especially all the podcast 2.0 stuff. It's very difficult for me to break away from the muscle memory that is Pocket Cast. So there are some really, really refined edges in Pocket Cast that still wins out over, let's say, a Good Pods or any other app. And it really comes down to quite literally milliseconds and how fast I can get to my podcast. And that's the one thing Good Pods doesn't do very well, for me anyway. So let's just talk about the three major areas of Good Pods. I'm, I'm gonna highlight the areas here, feed, library, and and the Discover tabs. These three are, or should be the three most common areas areas that you're going into Good Pods for. Let's just talk about the library for a second. So this is where you would go to play your podcast as if you were just whipping open your app to, <laughs> to listen to a podcast for the day. Usually mine is some kind of news uh, show or maybe pod news to get some podcast insights. The problem here is it's like three clicks. So it's almost the same on the web as it is in the mobile browser. So, and the mobile app. Pocket Casts, I just open right up into my podcasts and it's all the most recent podcasts right there, which I know sounds silly. You're saying, Matt, well, we're talking about seconds here. Yeah, we're talking about seconds, but it's so comfortable and so I'm so used to it that that's what I do. And I can quickly just find the podcast that I want because it's showing me whatever, 20 at a time or whatever the list is in Pocket Cast. If I go to library, I'm presented with like these three major sections, in player queue, continue listening, latest episodes, bookmarks, my subscriptions. Just to go to the latest episodes, I have to click into the library, go to the latest episode section. I only see four of the most recent in this big cover art icon style view. And then I have to go to view all and still it's it's not really tight. It's not really zoomed out, if you will. I don't see a lot of information on the screen as if I would on my mobile device. So those three or four clicks, are, it's. I know it's foolish, but you all might know that you have your favorite app, you have your ways of accessing stuff, and you just wanna go back to it. So when you're doing that on repeat, a dozen times a day, like I am going in and listening to all my podcasts, it can get kind of cumbersome. And that's the one drawback that I think Good Pods is really missing is get me right to the content that I can listen to. And here's why they do that. And I think I'm just playing devil's advocate here is because they want you to spend time in what their unique value prop is or their unique feature of the of the platform is the feed. It's to see what your friends and other adjacent people are listening to and commenting on and rating in the Good Pods network or platform, if you will. So you can see the people that you're following and you have the everyone so you can kind of see what everyone else on the network is doing. And what this is doing is 
increasing that discoverability. And especially for indie podcasters, it's very difficult, right? So they're, they're doing a good thing. It's just very difficult to achieve that while getting me my content that I've already subscribed to. I don't know if there's a way <laughs> to fuse this experience without, dis- without upsetting a lot of people, but if there was a quicker way to my library, all of the episodes in the latest list, just like I do in Pocket Cast, and I get to scroll through which ones I want and which ones I want to quickly archive, but also weave in stuff from like another listener on the network that are, it's kind of bolted into that list, I'll take that. But having to go to the library in a separate tab, multi-clicks, kind of difficult. I'm playing in the I'm playing in the margins here, but that's just me. If it's not you, let me know in the comments. But the following everyone in groups tab, this is the differentiator of good pods and this is why I think them going to the web is really important to their success because just like with the podcast 2.0 apps, I use those in in particular contexts, right? So again, they're not my daily driver, but if I want to send a boostagram Uh, to a show, or I want to stream sats, or I want to check out some cool podcast 2.0 features like chapters, cover art, the live item stuff that they're doing, then I'll go and use it for that particular show in that particular moment in that particular app. And I can see myself really doing the same thing with good pods when I want to discover a a new show, interact with a show, and get ratings, reviews, see what's trending, and then most importantly, see what these top 100 charts are for indie for indie podcasters. So if I just click on this, we can just see what Good Pods recommends. I can go in to see top 100 podcasts on Good Pods by this week, this month, and all time. And then I can trigger the indie-only uh, filter to show that the indie-only list. And here's a pro tip, and here's how I would approach Good Pods if I were a podcaster. I, wait a minute, I am a podcaster. <laughs> and if I want to connect with another podcaster or get on somebody else's show as a guest, maybe you start within the Good Pods network to like, comment, follow, share these episodes on Good Pods to warm up the conversation to get on that show. As a creator, as a podcast creator, there's nothing more aggravating than the cold outreach email that you get to say, hey, such and such, my boss wants to be on your podcast. They're a Fortune 5000 CEO, and you're like, trash. (laughs) You don't even listen to my podcast. You don't care about my content. You're just looking for a link. You, as a creator, getting on another show, here's a fantastic way to warm up that conversation, get to know the creator a little bit more, listen, and then start engaging. I mean, it's, again, playing in the margins here, but it could be something that makes all the difference in the world to land a good spot. So really love what's happening. I love the transition to a web browser because I can kind of interact with it a little bit more. It's a little bit quicker than it is on the mobile app. One thing that will, I think will be, to wrap up this video, I think one thing that will be the game changer, especially on or in the web browser, is the groups feature. Now, when I click on the groups feature, it says, sorry, this feature is not yet available on the web version. On the mobile device, it's there, great. But on the on the browser, if if I can start interacting in groups, having a little bit more control, searching, filtering, communicating, it's all just a lot faster for me on, on my laptop or on my, on my desktop. I think that's when the Good Pods web experience is really going to open up. Heck, all of Good Pods is really going to open up when you can start doing more with groups as a creator and as a listener. So really looking forward to seeing this feature open up on the web. How about you? Are you using Good Pods? Let me know what your experience is. Is it your daily driver now? I know there's a lot of people really loving it. They're doing a lot more, like I said, with Twitter spaces, really interacting with the indie community. So thumbs up over there. Definitely check those out. Follow them on Twitter. All right. If you have any questions, comments, first, like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave those comments below. It's Good Pods on the web. Let me know what you think. All right. We'll see you in the next video.